Hi and welcome to this short introductory video on the ramsey kass koopmans model. So according to the task, consider a standard ramsey kass koopmans model presented for example in several lecture costs. I will um, link the one by uh, Mr. Pretner down below and also in the slides. Assume reasonable parameter values and then solve the model numerically. Assume that the economy is initially at a steady state, then people suddenly become more impatient. Simulate the adjustment dynamics after the preference shock. So to shortly outline the structure of the video, I will first lose some introductory words on the theoretical foundations and also the initial steady state equations and then um, really focus on the adjustment process in case of uh, um, people becoming more impatient and I thereby discuss short, middle and long run dynamics. And in the end I will also mention some alternative shocks um, which will be discussed in further introdu introductory videos. As now mentioned, um, I assume some background knowledge on the Ramsey-Kassi-Koopmans model. If you are not familiar with it at all, I can strongly recommend to watch the videos by Mr. Pratner on them before. So some theoretical background, the ramsey kass koopmans model is really the cornerstone in neoclassical growth theory from the mid-1960s on. And it is largely building on Ramsey's model of society's optimal saving, which was later developed by Samuelson and Solov and then completed by Kass and Koopmans. And some model discussions are fundamentally coined by the evaluations of Atemoglu, but also Barry, Saleh, Martin, or Gandolfo. And it is in principle an extension of the Solov model. Extension because it's a Solov model with an endogenous, so no longer exogenously determined, but endogenously determined by the per capita capital stock saving rate. So the endogenizing of the saving rate enables to assess how it depends on the interest rate and wealth and an even more complex analysis also on taxes or subsidies. And to come to the basic model setup, so we again have um, firms of the, on the one side uh, firms on the production side produced with a new classical production function with labor augmenting technological progress. I here assume a Cobb Douglas function, so um, keep it really simple. And they maximize their profits by choosing optimal factor inputs, capital and labor, and thereby have to consider the outlays for employees' wages at the wage rate and um, their capital rental rate. Besides firms, we have households on the other side. Um, households are assumed to be identical, so we assume one representative household. Each inelastical is applying one unit of labor at a certain wage rate. They are constrained by the asset evolution and um, maximize the discounted stream of infinite lifetime utility. Additionally, it is necessary to mention that um, the utility is assumed to grow with the population growth rate, so we assume a band per mite utility function and it is discounted at the rate of impatience. In this impatience, uh, the relation between the impatience and the population growth rate, we assume that um, the rate of impatience is larger than the population growth rate and both larger than zero, of course. Um, this is called the parental selfishness. This parental selfishness assumption justifies the assumed infinite time horizon and implies positive utility by having more children who then um, again benefit from consumption. And the optimal behavior of households and also firms um, can then be described by two isoclines namely the um, capital accumulation equation on the one side 
and the Euler equation, also called Ramsey rule, according to Frank Ramsey, um, on the other side. And of course, it's also um, always most intuitive to look at the things graphically. Therefore, you can plot them in the so-called phase diagram. And we can see their um, capital and consumption, both in units of effective labor, capital on the um, horizontal axis, consumption on the vertical one. And we have the two um, isoclines. So the consumption isocline is um, vertical, whereas the capital isocline is a hump-shaped curve. And so the capital isocline is a hump-shaped curve, crossing the um, x-axis again um, at once at the origin and then again at the maximum level of capital per unit of effective labor. And the consumption isocline crosses the um, x-axis at the initial level um, of capital. So the initial level is given as will be discussed further in a second. And it's already clear, um, obvious that the two isoclines separate the phase diagram into four quadrants, whereas each is characterized by different capital and consumption dynamics. So this is further discussed in the lecture cast linked, um, but just to mention it here. And we are now most interested in this, in this initial steady state. Um, and to solve for it, there is no analytic solution possible, but um, you can solve it um, numerically by solving the equation more or less twice. So considering possible um, solutions to both extensions of the initial capital level, and then you can come up with this stable steady state settled path. Um, just a glimpse, so the um, most effective method here is to solve um, by this time elimination method, which is here hinted at, but I won't discuss it in detail. Uh, there are several papers on it and it's quite complicated and complex, but just to provide a, for, um, an overview. In the end, you then come up with this saddle path. So here in red, you can see that the economy always converges to this um, steady state, uh, which is here from both sides, either below um, the optimal level or above. So to shortly summarize, so the initial capital level is given and um, is exogenously um, given, while the initial consumption level then is endogenously determined and in a way to fulfill the so-called transversality condition and to converge to this um, steady state. So um, we have three assumptions more or less. First, the initial condition that all assets are held in terms of capital. Then we have the Nuponzi condition, so households cannot borrow an unlimited amount of assets. Their debt cannot grow faster than the real interest rate. And thirdly, the transversality condition, ensuring that in, in infinite dimensional problems there are no beneficial solutions changes in an infinite number of choice variables. And in the end, in the steady state equilibrium, consumption and capital in terms of effective labor are constant. Consumption and capital per capita, however, grow at the constant rate of technological progress. And to now um, look at it numerically, I um, set up the model in a statistical programming language and I dare use R. Um, it would be equally possible to look at it in MATLAB or also Julia, but and um, I will open the code and go quickly through it. You can then have a more detailed look afterwards, so I will be um, rather short. Uh, basically, in R you have this command um, section, then um, you will see down below what I do. And on the right you can see in the upper, um, in the upper um, quadrant the variables defined and also um, the functions. And down below the plots will, uh, the final plots will show up. So I first clear the environment, then I would have to install the packages 
um, needed if I have not done so um, but I already did so so I can just load them then I define my um, parameters needed also the functions needed so um, the capital accumulation dynamics and also the consumption dynamics I define the initial conditions the time span and then um, Put this all together to then plot my final model and um, I did every line separately more or less but in the end you can come up with this final picture on the steady state um, given my assumed parameter values and I will now go back to my slides so here I again um, inserted a picture of the resulting uh, phase diagram and of course now after talking about the initial steady state it's most interesting to look at the preference shock and um, the preference of households is captured in the so-called discount rate in the raw in my model um, so in the parameter raw and um, this parameter has to be higher if the impatience of household increases and if we remember the oil equation, we know that the discount rate only enters the equation for the oil equation directly, but not the capital accumulation equation. So um, when people become more impatient, they are in effect more, less incentivized to save. But only the consumption can initially change, not the capital stock. So, um, as we will see in a second, consumption more or less jumps at the point of the shock, but capital only adjusts in the longer run. It is therefore necessary to look at the short, the middle and the long run, and not only the long run. So first to the short run, when people become more impatient, they consume more initially, so consumption jumps upwards. Savings for the longer term decrease and capital accumulation slows slightly down. Utility is therefore higher in the short run but at the cost of future consumption and output. Then in the medium term, capital accumulation further slows down and we end up with a consumption that is lower than the initial level. In the long run then, the economy really converges to a lower steady state with lower capital and consumption per unit of effective labor. So high impatience leads to a preference for current over future consumption. And longer term growth decreases. To shortly look at it graphically before um, again doing it in R, um, we can more or less see that if the row increases, so for the green line, the steady state goes down from this initial level, capital and consumption per unit of effective labor are then lower. And to look at it in the code, it's more or less the same as before but um, I no longer determine the raw directly, but only look at it li um, later, so let it vary um, with a lower and a higher value. So first again setting my um, parameters, except from raw, um, this is defined later on. Again the, um, the functions needed and also the assumptions. And then we have those um, two different um, values for raw. So one lower and one higher one. And then we look at the um, um, at the, the setup uh, before and after the preference shock. And the same picture um, results as seen before. So we really have this first in orange this initial level then we have the preference shock and we jump down to a new steady state with lower capital per unit of effective labor and lower consumption per unit of effective labor
and as said in the beginning um, of course not only um, the impatience of households could change in a model but also several other parameters could change I just for fun also looked at an increase in theta therefore the dynamics are basically the same so we end up with a lower capital and lower consumption per unit of effective labor just um, the only main difference is that technological progress there also plays a, um, a more direct role but um, the basic picture is the same. So thank you for watching this short introductory video. I will share the slides and also the code and um, there will be some further videos on further dynamics in the Ramsey-Kass-Koopmans model.